Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the procedures and functions. Whenever we are going to make any program, and in that program we need some lines which are repeating again and again, then those lines we put inside the other block, which is called the procedure and function. So to understand that, we are taking the example. Let us suppose that we are having a program. Now inside that program, we are having some lines of code which are written. Now there is a possibility that in this program we need to call the sum of two numbers, let's say three times. So we are not going to write that sum three times here. We will make a separate block for that. And in this block, we are going to write the code for some specific purpose, let's say sum of two numbers. Now, whenever it is required, we are going to call this. Now, this block is called procedure or function. Now, in this procedure or function, we are having some of the commands which are related. That means if this procedure is for sum, making the sum of two numbers, then all the statements related to the sum will be there inside that. So this procedure will only be having the statements related to the sum. So we can say that procedure or function is the group of related commands that perform certain tasks. There is one more name of procedure and function that is called the subroutine or the subprogram. So subroutine and subprogram is another name. Now, these procedure and functions are used for the repetitive tasks. Let's say in a program, if I has to make the sum of two numbers nine times. So I will not write this line nine times. I will simply make the function for that or the procedure for that. So this is the repeated task we are doing. And what is the benefit of that? The benefit of that is we are having the modularity, which is very easy to maintain. Whenever we are breaking a program into multiple parts, that is called the modular. Here we can see that there we are having the two parts available. One is the procedure or function and second one is the program. So whenever we are opening the code, we will see these things. So we can easily understand the first body that is for the sum function and this one is the main program. So this is how it is very easy to understand and if we are going to find some problem, we can easily find out and resolve it. Because we can resolve these problems, that's why we can say that it is easy to debug. Whenever the main program require the requirement of the procedure, then the main program just call the procedure. So this is called the function calling or the procedure calling. So program is the main program who is going to call the procedure. So we can say that this procedure can be invoked from the calling block. So here the program is the calling program. So it is going to call the procedure. Let us suppose that whenever the program is calling the procedure, then the control is shifted. You assume that, let us suppose the first line is executed. Afterward on the second line, when it was executing, there was a function call. So here our control is shifted. So you can see that here the control is going on the procedure. Now afterward, procedure will be performed. The program is not going to work now. The procedure is performing its statement. So here we can say that whenever the subroutine or the subprogram or the procedure is called, then the control is shifted to the procedure. And after the execution, it is just returned back to the calling program. So when the program calls the procedure, then program cannot execute afterward. Now it is the turn of procedure. So when the procedure will complete its execution, afterward, after performing the last, it is coming back to the program. Now here, the program can move forward with its upcoming lines. So we should understand that whenever there is a function call, so we know that at that place, the function call was there. So there is a block of program. That means program cannot work afterward. The control is shifted to the procedure. Procedure will perform its task, then afterward it will be given back to the program. You can understand this way that, let us suppose that I am the program and you are the procedure. If I am working somewhere, then after if I am calling you, now I will be on the hold, I will stop. Now you will perform your task, afterward you will send me the control, then I can do the task. So this is how the control is shifted and once the procedure perform its execution, Afterward, program can continue its own task. 
We know that in the .NET, there are various places, just like there is a class module, there is a normal module, there is a form module. So everywhere we can write the procedure. So we can write the procedure in module, class module and the form module. So we can write the procedure in these places. If we take the example of the C programming, we know that there we define, let's say the function, maybe the void. So void sum we define in the C programming. And afterward, we used to write certain statements inside that. So this was a function or the procedure who is doing some different task. And there was one main program which was called as void main. We know that main was the calling program or the main program. There was also line was available. And here we are going to call the function. Now, how to call the function in the C programming? We know that. There we used to call with the function name and simple brackets. Now afterward that function was called. So this is how we can define the procedure and function. Now if we talk about the .NET, there is a syntax is different. So now we are learning that what are the different types of procedure and functions there. So there are four types of procedure and functions in .NET. The first type of procedure is sub procedure. The second type is function procedure. The third one is event procedure. And the fourth one is property procedure. Sub procedure is also popular with the name procedure. And function procedure is popular with the name function. So whenever somebody is saying you procedure, make the program with procedure, then you should understand that they are talking about the sub procedure. And if somebody is specifying that, function then you should understand that they are talking about the function procedure so these are the two main categories under this four we know that there are four types of procedure and functions sub procedure function procedure event procedure and property procedure but mainly there are only two categories of procedure and functions the one is the procedure and second one is the function or we can say that one is the sub procedure and second one is the function procedure out of that, there are some special categories of procedures. They are called the event procedure and the property procedure. But mainly there are two, sub procedure and the function procedure, which are popular with the names procedure and functions. Now, what is the difference between this sub procedure and function procedure or procedure and function? Whenever any of the procedure that is not returning anything, that is called the procedure or the sub procedure. So we can say that sub procedure of the procedure don't have return type. They are not returning anything. But in reverse, if we talk about the function procedure or the function, whenever a procedure is returning some value, now that is called the function procedure or the function. So we can say that functions or the function procedure return value. Means whenever we define some of the block or the procedure, now here we are calling them and in return they are saying nothing. So that is the procedure or the sub procedure or in the return they are giving you something that is called the function or the function procedure. If we take the example of C programming, there we know that whenever we start a function, there we use void. Now afterward we give the name of function, let's say sum and then we provide certain braces, then the bracket inside that we provide the definition. Now that void is nothing but no return type. So such type of thing in the .NET called the procedure. Although there is a different way of writing the function, but we have taken the C programming example here to understand. Similarly, if we talk about the C programming, if we are having a function starting with some return type, let's say int, then we write sum. Now here in the bracket, we give some of the statement, then afterward we write return and we return some of the value, let's say one or something. Now that is called the function procedure because here we know that there is an int means that function is returning something of integer type. So here we are having the return value. So functions and the procedure that means function procedure or sub procedure. These are the two major types of procedure and functions. Now we are talking about the other types. The first one we are having is the event procedure. Whenever a procedure is associated with some of the control that is called the 
event procedure. We know that we are in the .NET and in the .NET we make the GUI application. Let us suppose that we are creating a good web form. Now in this web form, let us suppose that we are having a button. Now this button may be the OK button, simply press OK. Now whenever this OK button is pressed, some of the function will be called. Now whatever that function is, now this function will be called on the button click. Let us suppose that we are having some button which is maybe void button. We are assuming that this is a button void which is not returning something. In the dotted is different but we are taking some example to understand. Now let us suppose that this button function call whenever we click on the button. So such type of procedures which trigger when we click on the button or we move the mouse or this way they are working on some event. So they are called the event procedure means on some event they are called. Controls. Controls are the different different portions or the elements which are available into the toolbox. We know that in the toolbox we are having button, we are having list box, label. So all those are controls. The functions or the procedures which are working for those controls just like button or maybe the list box, text box, those are called the event procedure. So whenever we move the mouse or whenever we click on the button, some action is triggered. That is called the event procedure. The next one we are having is the property procedure. As the name signify, if a procedure is associated with the property, that is called the property procedure. We know that every control is having their own property. Just like if we talk about a text box. In the text box, we are having text. We are having text color, four color, back color. Now, these are the properties. If any of the procedure is dealing with those properties, if you are going to set those properties by default or maybe the read only or maybe the custom properties. So that procedure is called the property procedure because that procedure is working with the properties of some specific control. Let us say we want to define some color or the back color or color or what is going to write in there. So that is called the property procedure. So here we have learned that in the dotted we are having four types of procedure and functions. Sub procedure who is dealing with the no return value means they are not going to return any value. Then is the function procedure which is returning value. Event procedure, procedure who are related with the controls. Then property procedure who are working with the properties. But out of these there are two main. The one is the procedure. Procedure is also called as sub procedure which are not returning anything. And second one is the function which is called the function procedure which are going to return anything. So that is all about the procedure and function.